Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. Forgive me. You know, my day job, they keep telling me, don't quit your day job because, well, let's face it, <laughs> there's no future here in broadcasting for you on YouTube, so that's why I keep my day job. And I had to go down the country and take care of business, and I know it's not... It's not the way I usually keep you guys up to speed with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys, but it's the best I can do. Give you a little bit here, a little bit there and stuff. So I'm back home now, thank God, between now and, and game day. I'll, I'll be right here. I'll be right here. And programming note, normally on Wednesday nights we'll do our uh, pick segment, um, but I was down the country, like I said, and uh, Stewart had heart surgery, so hopefully you guys will forgive us. And Roz is dealing with a whole bunch of different stuff. So we were going to try and do it tonight, but Stu, you know, he's doing good, but he's a little bit tired. And actually, quite frankly, if you look at me, I'm tired too. Climbing up and down that ladder on that roof and then rebuilding the deck today and driving down there and driving back. I'm tired, boss. I'm real tired. So forgive me for being a little bit. If I, if I end up yawning, you know, sorry, I, I don't mean to. So we will, though, tomorrow or Saturday do our pick, pick segment. But because we have a game that literally starts in about 15 minutes, Carson Wentz with the Colts versus Mike White with the Jets are going to be going on. And you guys know how I roll. I'm a homer. I've been betting on the Dallas Cowboys every single week. And guess what? Every week I've won. And I refuse to ever bet on the Washington football team, the Eagles, or the Giants, or Carson Wentz. So I will be taking the Jets plus the 10 and a half points. Carson Wentz has a way of, you know, always breaking your heart if he's your quarterback. And and, and I have a feeling that's what's going to happen tonight with the, the Colts. But even if he doesn't lose, as long as he doesn't win by more than 10 points, then we're good. And I believe Brother Stu is going to take the Jets as well. I don't know who Roz is going to take, but, I, you know, Scout's honor. He'll, he'll, he'll be honest and tell us who he really took. So that's what we're going to do on that. So here's the thing for me. I don't necessarily, in most arguments, I don't care – if you pick something, just be consistent. Just be consistent. So if you're an official and you're calling a lot of penalties, call a lot of penalties on both teams. It's when you kind of lean towards one way or the other that you're not. Just be consistent. Because I'm sitting here in my mind. It kind of pisses me off in a way. No, it, it not in a way. It just pisses me off. I think about C.D. Lamb who's been so micromanaged that he's got $48,000 worth of fines for literally having his shirt untucked. Maybe he should talk to the guy, you know, untuckit.com or something rather than get an endorsement. But regardless, $48,000 for having his shirt untucked. So clearly they're watching CD Lamb every step, right? You know, you think about how that game was officiated. I think we had 12 penalties against us. You know, we had, like, on, on one drive, three unnecessary roughness calls. You know, we had Tyler Basham on the, the punt, I think it was, or late hit on the quarterback, sorry. And then we got Randy Gregory for hitting a guy that was still in bounds. We got those called. And so now, here is the famous C.D. Lamb choke. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to play this and hope that the NFL police don't get me, but we'll see. So you'll see CeeDee Lamb catches the ball, right? Boom. Got tons of space in there. Looking good. Smith decides to ride. He jumps in the air. You'll see, you see his legs are off. Uh, he, he's literally in the air jumping on the man's back with his arms around his throat. Okay. We're down on the ground now. We're out of bounds. You can ease up. You can let go. But instead, he still holds on. They're now 
six feet out of bounds. And instead of saying, he's down on top of me, let me let him go, you see that arm is still around his neck, around his throat. You know, your trachea here is very sensitive. You ever get punched in the trachea? (gasps) That shit hurts. He is literally pulling and tugging. Look at this. Now, here's what really kind of pisses me off now that I've watched it. There's the official right there who realizes I need to get in between these two players because something can go down because this was not a typical play. Right? I need to step in between to break these guys up. Now, understand, you've been calling penalties on the Cowboys all night. Nothing unnecessary roughness. Isn't that kind of unnecessary? Choking a guy for a few seconds longer out of bounds? There's the official. He's saying something to him. How about I pull the yellow thing in my pocket and say, here's your warning. 15 yards, do it again, you're ejected. Let's watch it one more time in real time. Jumps on his back, rolls him over, and continues. Look at that. You have time enough for people to run over there to him. That is ridiculous. So Mike McCarthy is going to send a complaint to the NFL about that because here's the funny thing. Now, now, granted, it may be that it's coming Saturday. It may be that it's coming Saturday, okay? Um, because I know when our Cowboys players seem to get fines, it always seems like it's on Saturday. But if they don't find this mother helper, then you know the fix is in against the Dallas Cowboys. And see, this is the thing that kind of drives me crazy because the Cowboys are held – beyond the letter of the law for anything for anything even leaving your shirt tail out so aaron Rodgers, whether you agree with the rule or not it doesn't matter it's a rule and here's the thing if you don't want to abide by the rules you don't have to but that also means then you don't participate in the sport these are our rules in the same way you have to wear a helmet Why? Because I don't want to get your head at least scrambled as much. Right? If you want this job, here's the rules. You can't go to your job and say, you know what? I understand that's your company rule. Fuck your company rule. I don't care. But I still expect to have my job. It don't work that way. So for Aaron Rodgers basically to skirt the rules and basically say, you know, NFL, I'm going to do what I want to do. The NFL has to do something about it. You, you can't, you've got to be consistent. You can't go. And I know there's favoritism and Rogers. He's one of our big names, big draw. So we don't want to suspend him. We don't want to find him. We don't make example of him. Kind of like what you did with Zeke Elliott. It's kind of funny that Zeke Elliott, an investigation with like a 128-page report that came out on him, never arrested, never anything with the laws, right? Here it is, Deshaun Watson, hmm, all kinds of cases and everything else. Oh, well, we're going to let the legal course run its course. You follow where I'm going? Just be consistent. That's all I'm asking. Because that, my friends, was unnecessary roughness. That was Bush League. That was some bullshit right there. All right, so moving right along here, back to CeeDee Lamb, who yesterday ended up uh, hurting his ankle. Um, They're saying, of course, that they believe he's going to be playing uh, regardless that it's not that bad. So hopefully it isn't that bad. Um, Tyron Smith, it is that bad, and it looks like he's not going to be there. And for those out there who wanted us to go ahead, instead of keeping Terrence Steele, where he's been playing lights out at right tackle, to put Lyle Collins back at right tackle and then put 
Smith, I mean Steele, in Tyron Smith's spot, you get your wish. Now, I dare say, this is an inference from me, okay? This is no, I, I don't have any body that's whispering in my ear to say that this is what it is. But in my mind, to me, this says a lot more about Terrence Steele and belief in him than Lyle Collins. Here's what you have to understand. If you've never played football, you think an offensive lineman is an offensive lineman. It doesn't matter. Just a lineman. They're not skilled. That's some bullshit. Are you right-handed? Do you write with your right hand? Right? Sign your name real nice and pretty. Now do it with your left hand. Not quite as pretty, is it? It's hard. You have to think about it now, right? Because what you have to understand with being an offensive lineman or even a defensive end, when you switch from one side to the other, everything's reversed. Tyron Smith, is always used to having the guy trying to run around the outside to his left. If you were to switch to his right side, now it's reversed. That means you step with the other foot. The coordination there is, is different. He's been used to taking that left hand and pushing people over. Now you got to do it with your right hand. Everything is reversed. It's hard to go ahead and go from one side to the other. And I know the average person will think, it's hey, you're just a lineman. All you got to do is block a guy. No. When you get a defensive end that's about 260, 270, that runs a 4640, every single step, every bit of your skill set, every move matters because you can be left behind. And what this says to me is they look at Terrence Steele and said, brother, you real good. We have faith in you going to the hardest position to block in football. It is your job to protect the blind side of our quarterback. Our quarterback that we just paid a boatload of money. We have faith that you can get it done. To me, that's what it says. That's what it says. We believe in you. Then we hear about TCU wants to set up an interview with Kellen Moore. Whether TCU gets that interview or anything like that, start getting used to this. Kellen Moore is going to be a hot commodity in the NFL, guys, as well as Dan Quinn. People are going to look at what the Cowboys' offense is doing and the way the defense has come around. And they're going to say, I want that on my team. To a man, nobody thought this defense had any chance whatsoever to be any good. Nobody. Nobody. But yet, here they are. And this defense, I'm trying to remember who said it, but if it moves, we hit it. They have completely changed the narrative. You know, last year it drove me crazy. If you you watched me last year, watching me go through the agony of last season, it drove me crazy because I would see one guy engaged with the ball carrier and everybody else standing around. And I'm like, The way we were taught was the first man stands him up. The second, third, fourth, fifth man is the one that cleans him up and tries to get the ball. Makes sure that he doesn't get away. Too many times we had poor tackling. Guys would just try and lay a blow, not even put their hands on them, and they'd bounce off, and because everybody else was just standing around, They go to the house on us. Not anymore. In this new age NFL with less practices, the Cowboys were able to teach fundamentals to these guys. Angles, tackling, 
how to tackle. And it's amazing. And again, if you're one of those teams out there, you're looking and saying, I want that guy to lead my team. So get used to that. So Amari Cooper today, okay, Amari Cooper who um, his hamstring's a little tight. You know, Amari always is a little bit banged up and stuff. Was asked about how Dak Prescott looked today. Now understand, Amari Cooper don't talk much. Amari Cooper is that guy that, in my mind, you have to check his pulse. Amari, are you okay? Yeah. Because he's so low-key. When he was at an autograph signing up at Chantilly, it was like he was acting like we were Joe the fan, scared to talk to him. Low-key. So he said, how did Dak Prescott look today? He said, he looked regular. The reporter said, but you said that last week. <laughs> Cooper started laughing. But what, I, but what I, did I tell you last week? I said, I thought he could play. I didn't know he wouldn't play. He looked the same to me. <clears throat> Maybe he's good at practicing hurt. That's the guy right now who's beginning to enjoy football again. You'll remember when he was with the Raiders, <clears throat> he was being the checkout. They said he didn't care about football. He has truly found a home, and he has his truly has his teammates and everything else. And thank God he's not part of that cesspool right now with the Raiders. The Raiders, whoo, lordy. The Eagles, they play the Raiders this weekend. Right now, the Raiders... They've been winning some games, but you just keep looking after hit after hit from John Gruden to Ruggs and everything else. It's got to be crazy in that locker room. So that's where we are right now. We have Randy Gregory who says he doesn't really um, think about the contract and stuff. He's in a good place. It'll take care of itself. It's kind of like what Dak Prescott said because the reality is, is if I take care of things on the field, Good things will happen for me outside of the field. Um, and finally, Diggs. Diggs says Dak, Dak, Pre, Dak Prescott's return brings a lot of confidence, honestly. When he's out there, you know it's time to go. He's going to practice at a high level, so the defense has to practice at a high level. Just brings everyone together. He's our leader, our ring leader. Guys, we got something special going on. We have something special going on here in Dallas. And so with that being said, I am going to go um, get this uploaded. You got my picks. Uh, shout out to Stu. Shout out to Brother Roz. And shout out to all you great fans out there. Um, one more thing, actually. Uh, I'm working on some stuff. If you are a channel member, okay, um, Channel members, you know, we're going to start really taking care of you. I, a lot of y'all been there some 23, 22 months and things. Um, we're going to be doing some extra stuff for you guys for being channel members uh, and stuff. We're working on some software that's going to help enable it me easier. It'll be easier for me to be able to track and figure out who's who, what's what, and so on, and really be able to do some special things for you. So be looking for that in the very near future, next couple of days, maybe even by tomorrow night. Um, but we're definitely going to take good care of you. And with that being said, you know how we roll. It's time for us to get up out of here. And you know what they always want to say to me? You, you're fired. You're fired. Whoa. You're 